What's going on y'all and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. We got the one minute update summary alongside the ML Cid uh, full reveal. Sorry, Light Cid I should say. We'll watch that video together, first impressions, all that. But let's go ahead and check out here what we have in this week's update. Hopefully there's some additional stuff, not just the release for Cid. Draft mode update, including Overlord characters. We have the new hero, Wandering Prince Cid, which we'll watch in just a second. World Arena schedule and the new skin. All right, all right. Anything else, Smiley? What do we got? Profile card frame added, Guild War schedule, and that looks to be it. Okay. Draft mode update. I really like these guys. I hope they address. I've kind of been away for almost two weeks now, but I'm finally back, and I've been loving draft mode before I took off um, for vacation here. And draft mode has been super fun, so them updating this is very, very nice. They did show the Overlord characters, though, so let's see if they're adding. Wow. All right. So they're actually adding these straight up to the draft mode pretty quick here which is really, really nice. We're going to skip over the Sid portion because I want to keep that fresh and kind of like a first impression when we get there. World Arena, old season ends uh, on Saturday, guys, May 4th. So start locking in your ranks. Remember, Masters at least for the Bryceria skin, which I'm assuming... Are they going to show it here in this video? Yes, I think they will. Let's check it out. I think this one looks really, really good. Uh, just design-wise, I really like the way they did her hair especially. So uh, I'm definitely going to have to get that. And I have not been playing uh, any RTA. So I'm going to have to go ahead and get Masters to lock that in. Remember, you can get the skin later on, but it takes so long. I would suggest, if possible, you guys try to lock that in. RTA rank. Uh, profile card frames added. You can obtain the profile card from corresponding to your league by finishing the World Arena Oath Season in the Gold League or higher. Okay. So they're adding these to the... Um, you can get these frames for whatever uh, rank you end in, which is a nice additional, like feature to try and um you know get up there in ranks shout tier which we already knew will not be allowed uh and then watering prince sid will not be allowed as well guild wars will begin this saturday thank god we can finally start you know officially getting the five times mystics and to keep resetting it on the preseason but here we go shout tier coming out uh, let's see on 425 this week bazaar which we're definitely skipping right guys because we're saving all our bookmarks and then we have a Mystic Summon rotation of uh, these nice units here, especially Navy Captain Landy and Wandering Sid. Available May 2nd. All right. Um, here's our coin shop rotation as well. Let's go ahead and check out right, Sid. You know, Wandering Prince Sid loaded up here. Let's watch it together. Can't wait to see what he's all about. The goddess of victory graced the brave young adventurer with <laughs> a smile. How's that? I wasn't expecting that voice, You're but okay. third rate villain. So it's time to take a bow. You know, I don't mind it. So the rumors were true. Wondering Prince. Little comical, but I think that's the point. Prince of a faraway future. Fourteenth Prince, okay. Traveling the world and collecting tales, Wandering Prince Sid was taken hostage by Pirate Captain. Ah, some Pirate Captain Flan synergy. It's unclear whether the feeling of exhilaration concept art. in his heart stems from his precarious situation. I really like his model too. I think they did a great job on his colors. Just the overall theme of his uh, costume. Alright, so we got some relationship to Pirate Captain Flan. He's a prince. And uh, he writes stuff down with that quill in his parrot. Alright, so he's a mage. My god, I wasn't expecting that. Sid being a mage is really, really unique. And I kind of like when Smalge does this and completely changes or flips it. Instead of being like another thief or something. They completely made him a mage. All right. I'm assuming he's going to have some Taga Hells. He can write down some additional stuff with that quill of his. But yeah, let's go and take it from here. 117 speed and attack and effectiveness imprints. All right. Let's jump straight into the skills here. Skill 2 is a passive natural storyteller. After an ally, use an attack that targets all enemies. Activates continuous strike. Can only be activated once every three turns. Okay. So we have a few other units that have this um, activation after uh, AoE attack, essentially. This is once every three turns. Uh, the skill enhancements are all damage, and it says attacks the enemy, so single target, decreases combat readiness by 20%, and increases combat readiness of the ally with the highest combat readiness except for the caster by 20%. Okay, kind of cool. Uh, very utility-like. Uh, we'll see the damage on it, but essentially, you're going to decrease combat readiness of a unit by 20%, as well as increase your own team's highest unit uh, on the bar by 20% as well. So kind of like a double a double swing in terms of combat readiness affecting, but a uh, single target for both your ally and the enemy, right? Okay, very cool. Let's go and see the animation for Natural Storyteller. They have a little book icon there too. Man, you gotta run this guy on target hells, right? 
Let's see here. Okay. I saw some AO units. Oh, let me go and mute the GM says real fast. All right. So we're activating with uh, Lydica here. And okay. So it seems like they built their Sid with zero damage since he is a mage. I'm assuming we're not going to go for any crit and we're going to be a full on, uh, what, like effect in his speed kind of build. Let's see here. Yeah, we're not there for the damage, but we did the decreased combat readiness on the ML Politis and then we pushed up. The uh, Lydica, okay. Very cool. Allows her to go straight into S3, and they're showing it here into that Navy Captain Landing. Remember, she's going to be on the Mystic Rotation, so somehow you missed her. Um, depending on the, how much you want to spend for Sid or not, those two units are coming up. Narrative Retcon. Oh, wow. That's an interesting uh, skill name. Plants a bomb on all enemies, increases speed for two turns. Uh, one turn cooldown here. Make it four turns. At the end of the turn, detonates bombs inflicted on the target. Plants a bomb on all enemies and increases speed. So bomb, two turn decrease speed, and then he instantly detonates it two at the end of his turn. Um, wow. All enemies too. Anyway, okay, let's see the animation here, but I think... Is this an attack or is this... Sounds like a non-attack skill, right? Yeah, so it just it's just a debuff or a, a spell that just applies all the debuffs. And we don't see it here, but there's actually like double bombs going off because of the two stuns. So I'm assuming Navy Captain Landy went first. Uh, maybe I skipped too far ahead. Did we see that? No. Okay. So they usually go into the animation, which by the way, I didn't really comment on too much either. Animation looks pretty good as well. I like those kind of retro colors. They show in the little cutscene. But spiral cut here. Taxing me with a machete. With a, let's see, 5, 10, 75% chance to decrease defense. It's only one turn which um, I'm a fan of. When units have two-turn defense breaks on their S1, you guys know, probably know what units kind of I'm talking about. It's a little bit powerful, um, but a defense break in general is very powerful. Just one turn is a lot less oppressive, obviously. Soul burn effect, we can increase that to 100, and there it is, two-turn defense break. You know, I really like this. Um, two-turn defense break is insanely powerful, and we can use those 10 souls if we want to guarantee that landing. And remember, he can hold the Taga Hells, so we can have this even, you know, we can have this super, super early. All right, let's see the animation for that. I'm assuming it's just his Sid's normal. I think he does like a little flip, right, with his uh, dagger, his machete, I should say. Is that what I'm remembering correctly? Yeah, little flip and then a spin. Same type of animation. Okay. All right, guys. Well, let's see uh, the lobby animation, then we'll talk shop. Um, I was not expecting a mage. Oh, they put Navy Captain Landy here on the other side because they're really in lore. I like that a lot. He did. What did he do? He did a little flip with his quill, and then he, you know, gives it a quick lick, and he gets to riding. A little parrot on his head. Very nice. I think they did a great job on his overall look. I like the feathers. I like the overall color palette. And then his theme really fits, you know, the fact that he's related to... Not related, you know, you guys know what I mean. Navy Captain Landy plays a, a role in his lore. All right, so let's talk about what we want to use him with. They're showing Navy Captain Landy here. Obviously, anything with bombs. So Captain Landy, Samurai Seria, maybe like the Emma Leo. Obviously, have some nice synergy here because if you speed tune correctly, we can go ahead and activate uh, those bombs as well as set up our own bombs additionally, right? Just a crap ton of bombs here. That on top of the fact that anyone with AoE attacks like Navy Captain Flan gives that additional activation, which will increase combat readiness for an ally as well as decrease for an enemy. And then as we see here, decreased speed is so, so powerful too in these kind of control setups on top of that. And additionally, now that we're, you know, setting up these bombs, <coughs> excuse me, units like Specimen says, extra synergy there as well. So really, really cool unit. I think, I don't know if, uh, I think all the bomb setup stuff is an attack, right? Navy Captain Landy, Samurai Seria, and then um, Leo are the three that come to my mind. Most of them are all attacks, so the first bomb setup unit that is uh, a non-attack. Obviously, we have like the Summertime Iceria passive, right? So that one, I guess, is similar. But in general, I think applying our debuffs like that with a non-attack skill is even better, especially one, we're not going to build him with damage, so we can instead go, instead go for pure speed and effectiveness, things like that. And then two, um, we don't have to risk any counters or you know bad stuff happening. Here we're showing with a blooming little and hey, we have the roaming warrior Leo. I think they showed that in the uh, one of the skill previews. But here we go. You see the the bombs. It is an attack, even though it doesn't do damage. Um, but yeah, a lot of synergies with the bomb units. The fact that it is non-attack, I think, is going to be very good. The fact that he's a mage, I think, is going to be very good. One of the better ML fours. Um, 
I think in, in currently in the game, a lot of them are very hit or miss. Some of them are extremely powerful, but I think Sid is going to be a, a pretty good one, especially for control players, speed players, players that like the combat readiness manipulation and just, you know, like I keep saying, controlling the battlefield. But yeah, I think he's actually very solid and I expect to see him in the meta. So there you go, guys. Get ready to pull for him. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch all of you in the next one. Peace out, guys.